Eric Magidson here with Central Oregon Community College. You know, as we enter into Excel and talk about and learn about Excel, I find that a lot of students really struggle with Excel. And I'm hoping that this one video makes understanding Excel that much easier for you. The fact is, what we need to understand is the language of Excel. I call that Excel ease because once you learn this, Excel becomes easy. I know, great pun, right? So let's start. What I'm talking about here is the idea that a static function is bad and a dynamic function is good. Certainly to add up the values that exist in cell A1, B1, C1, and D1, let's do that in E1. I'm going to start with the equal sign that indicates to Excel that we're going to do a function. I'm going to just say 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, just like we would put it into a calculator. And if we then hit the Enter key, we get the answer 10. Now 10 is the correct answer, but what makes this really bad is that we've used the actual values, the 1, the 2, the 3, and the 4. What we want to do is make this a dynamic function. So essentially, folks, the key here is I don't care what values are in these cells. I just want to use the cell address, in this case, A2, B2, C2, and D2 to create the function. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to say equals A2 plus B2 plus C2 plus D2. Now some of you that know more about Excel are saying, oh, there's an easier way to do it, and there certainly is. But let's keep to the basics. So this is a dynamic function. Because if you notice, I'm not using the values. I'm using the cell addresses. So I'll say Enter. And we get the same example. Now here is why static is bad and dynamic is good. Let's say suddenly the value in A1 became 2 and the value in A2 became 2. So I've just ent entered 2 in each, hit enter, and if you notice, the static function we entered in E1, remember 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, even though now in A1 we have the value of 2, that formula didn't change. But in E2, because we used the cell value or the cell address, of A2, B2, etc., we get the right answer. So let's continue with this concept just a little bit here. Another example of static and dynamic. So here I'm going to multiply. So I would say 1 times 1. That gives us 1. Here equals 2 times 2, 4, equals 3 times 3. And finally, equals 4 times 4. So there's the values. Now I'm going to do this the right way by saying equals. And this time, instead of typing it, I'm going to come over and click on the cell. Equals A4 times the value in B4. And I get that. Let me continue this. A5 times B5 equals a6 times b6 and finally equals a7 times b7. So if you notice we're getting the right answers but now I'm going to come in here and change all of these values by changing the first one and then copying notice I'm using the arrow and the plus sign in the lower right left click and hold once I get that plus sign and drag it down now let's see what values are right. Well, let's see. Is 1 times 2, 1? I don't think so. And all the way down. But if you notice where I used the cell address and made a dynamic formula, Excel is easy. I hope this starts your learning in Excel. Take your time. Understand this. Make sure you practice. This is one of the keys to Excel, and it will make Excel very easy. Until next time. 
Take it easy. Have a great day.